Kumaris were involved in the criminal investigation of Donald Trump's businesses in Manhattan, which led to the conviction of Donald Trump's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. Jack Smith's prosecutors are reportedly investigating whether the surveillance video system at Mar-a-Lago could have been tampered with. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. He served on the January 6th Select Committee, and he's currently a candidate for Senate in California. Congressman Schiff, thank you very much for joining us tonight. When I see these witnesses uh, who defied your subpoenas at the January 6th Committee being dragged into the grand jury, which they can't find any way around, I, I often wonder, what would the committee have liked to ask uh, Dan Scavino, and what do you suspect uh, he was being asked in the grand jury? Well, you're right. So we tried to get him to testify. And, you know, what we've seen, Lawrence, over the last several years is some parts of our democracy are broken and need to be fixed. And other parts are working, but they're working very slowly. Uh, the part where c Congress can compel someone to come and testify is broken. Uh, they can essentially say, you know, the heck with Congress uh, and walk away with little repercussion. Uh, but the Justice Department has much more power to compel. What we would have liked to have heard what I think the Justice Department uh, hopefully did here is this was a guy in charge of Donald Trump's social media, uh, who many believe actually composed some of Trump's tweets, was certainly, you know, very instrumental in the campaign to push out the big lie uh, and had uh, undoubtedly multiple, multiple conversations about with Donald Trump about the big lie. Uh, and what will be most important to prosecutors is what's the evidence of the president's intent uh, did the president privately acknowledge that these were bogus claims, but nonetheless want Scavino to push them out? Uh, he was also reportedly present, uh, Scavino, uh, in communication with the president on January 5th and January 6th, uh, and was also responsible for monitoring some of these real right-wing sites where it was, you know, made pretty clear there was going to be violence on January 6th. So was this communicated to the president? that there was a real danger of violence on the 6th. Uh, these are some of the insights that Scavino, if he is uh, cooperating, uh, even compelled to cooperate, can share. Uh, you know, one remaining question, which I, I assume we'll find out at some point, is how often did he take the 5th? Did he take the 5th? But, uh, but hopefully... Uh, the special counsel got answers to those questions. I, I want to ask, uh, drawing on your experience as a former federal prosecutor, as an assistant U.S. attorney, what does it mean when the boss of the office, when the U.S. attorney himself decides to come into a grand jury session and listen to that witness? In this case, uh, it's Jack Smith, who is in effect in the position of a U.S. attorney boss, boss of a team of assistant U.S. attorneys. Uh, th this is the only instance where we are aware of where there's been any reporting that Jack Smith decided to be in the grand jury room himself when Vice President Pence uh, was questioned for five hours. What do, what do you take from that? Well, you know, probably the nearest analogy, because that kind of circumstance just doesn't happen, uh, is how often does a U.S. attorney, the leader of a particular office, sit in on a grand jury testimony. And that's very rare, particularly in a big office. But what I think it means is that this is a witness of singular importance and that the person is gonna ultimately have to make the decision uh, to recommend charges or not recommend charges to the attorney general, wants to see the credibility of the witness, wants to see directly for themselves, what does this witness have to say? How persuasive are they? Uh, are all the questions that the special counsel wanted answered have they been answered uh, so that he can make the most informed judgment? Uh, this does seem just by virtue of the significance of the witnesses and the pace with which they're coming before the grand jury. It does seem to be reaching a crescendo where soon the special counsel is going to have to make a decision. And I think he wants to be there to hear for himself before making that judgment. Yeah, it seems to me that if you're if you have the enormous responsibility to recommend a prosecution of Donald Trump with Mike Pence as a witness, you're going to want to be in that grand jury room for that one opportunity you're going to have to see Mike Pence testifying under oath and projecting for yourself what will it be like to have Mike Pence under oath in a trial of this case. I think that's exactly right. And, and remember, 
he'll make recommendations to the attorney general. It'll be up to the attorney general whether to accept those recommendations. But if the recommendation is to charge the former president, it would be very hard for the attorney general to disregard that recommendation, having brought him on for the purpose of, of his expertise. Uh, so here you have the top uh, you know, prosecutor who's going to make that recommendation, wanting to evaluate the witness's testimony, credibility. You know, Pence, of course, is thinking in the back of his head or in the front of his head, uh, what is this going to mean in my presidential campaign? And so special counsel is going to want to see how forthcoming was the vice president, how much does it seem like he's shading things so that he's not that critical of the president, so that it doesn't hurt his presidential campaign. You know, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have to worry about something like that. But Pence has demonstrated time and time again that the national interest um, is secondary at this point in his career to his political ambition. Uh, he did the right thing on January 6th, but he has been uh, essentially, I think, uh, trying to fudge ever since without going too much to criticize the president, not saying too much, uh, resisting, having to testify at all. Uh, so the special counsel just want to see how forthcoming was he really. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you very much for joining our discussion tonight. Thank you. Thank you.